How y'all doing? Now, this video I'm showing off various fantasy miniatures that I've collected and painted. Now, normally, as many of you know, when I do this, I just show a slideshow before and after we're painted, and I'm going to do that with these in another video. But for this one, I want to explain um, why I got each one of them. Um, now, most of the time when I collect miniatures, I usually uh, see it on the shelf or I, you know, look at past catalogs or what have you, and I'm like, ooh, I like that one. I collected and painted. Now, it wasn't up until recent years that I started to do uh, collecting to a theme. I've done it in the past with small ones, like um, there's Lizardmen that Reaper had that I like. I collected and painted those. I found an old giant Lizardman from a game um, of Hell Dorado um, that I thought would be a good leader-like character with it. So just a nice little theme like that. I collected some undead um, with a combination of miniatures from, from both past and present, just because they kind of look well together. And this one, um, there's a couple of these I got to a game um, called Rangers of Shadow Deep. You know, that's this game right here. This is a miniature agnostic game to where you um, create a ranger character, you have a miniature representing him, and you go on various missions. This can be done through solo play or with a group, and you can explore a certain town, fend off this ha family home from um, zombie attack or things like that. Uh, it has many expansions on this, so it's a um, pretty well done. This is done by the same guy, Joseph A. McAuliffe, who created Frostgrave and a few other games of its, um, of its like. So he's pretty good at this. And uh, the Rangers, you can find those, you know, anywhere. While I do have official miniatures like that, and I've reviewed some of those in a past video, you can get any miniature you want to have work with this. You're not, it's not like Games Workshop where you have to stick with the product of the game to play the game. So, you know, you could get from Reaper, um, Ironwind Metals, whatever you can find something that best suited suits you. The monsters are pretty basic fare. There's gnolls, skeletons, zombies, you know, giant serpents, rats, spiders, um, but there's a one of them that you know is closest thing to unique, and that's um, um, and it's that monster. Um, while you can get miniatures to use anywhere you want, I wanted to stick to theme on this one, so I could just grab any of them, and that's to a demon-like um, miniature. Now, and I found a couple that suit you. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the illustration in the book of Rangers Shadow Deep of what I'm talking about. This is called Terrorwing. Let me read the description. Giant, demonic-looking creatures. Terror wings stand nine feet tall with horns, claws, and a pair of large wings sprouting from their backs. Terror wings often lead small groups dedicated to finding and destroying any intruders in the Shadow Deep. This is supposed to be a big monster compared to everything else. This is supposed to be uh, a very difficult one to find. I think in the core rulebook I have, you only need one miniature to do this. Now, okay, it's a simple demon. Shouldn't it be too hard? Well, um... Most, well, you can find demon miniatures anywhere. Finding something close to this simple design um, outside of gargoyles or har even harpies is a bit hard to do. Um, I didn't want to buy any demon miniature. I mean, I have some of those. They tend to be just big, uh, monstrous demons, way over nine feet tall, and they're usually sporting weapons, you know, the typical sword and whip. I wanted to get past that one. So I... Try to see something I could find of a similar height compared to the other miniatures, like it represents nine feet tall, but that was hard to do, so I had to skip that. But before I, you know, did that, I found a couple miniatures that, you know, that could suit the bill. I wanted less Balrog, more Sardo Noobspa, if you know what I'm saying. So here's what I found. Okay, so this is the first one. This is Vulak, Prince of the Mist by Grenadier Miniatures. Um, he was originally... Um, as this is original miniature, he was part of a box set um, from uh, the Fantasy Lords Demon box set. And he was one of 11 miniatures that came with this. This miniature is still available, but you have to go through Merliton, who has the rights of Grenadier miniatures. And he's now part of a five or six miniature box set, they, you know, uh, package. They split that box set into two groups. I think it's a demon set one. Now, if you can... Uh, know someone who could order from Merliton, and bear in mind this is an Italian company, so there may be some extra shipping involved in that for make special orders. But I again, this could work for Rangers of Shadow Deep's Terror Wing, but I wanted something more, you know, stand out and all that. So when I got this, okay, uh, it wasn't the right height, but uh, again, I later had to look past that, and it could work, but I wanted something more. And then I found this. This was more of what I was looking for. This is a Night Gaunt by Rafa Miniatures. That's R-A-F-M, usually capital um, letters. 
Now, this is an older company. It's based in Canada. And I ordered this straight from the website. Bear in mind, the shipping is you know pretty pricey. So I think you want to balance it off if you want to buy more. This is from their Cthulhu Mythos range. There's two variants of this, and I like this one. And as you can see from the paint job, I wanted to give it a similar look to the illustration of the Terror Wing in the Ranger Shadow Deep book. So I, I gave it a uh, dark um, um, lower limbs, dark and wings, but high, uh, and a dark in head, and but sort of highlight the body in sort of a grayish or you know, pale um, pale flesh colors. I think it works out nicely. I mean, it's nothing extravagant there. The eyes, I I think the eyes could have been slightly better, but I wanted to give it a sort of a, a glow, or just a straight color glow towards it. But again, this works. I mean, I if I was playing Rangers of Shadow Deep, this is what I use for the Terror Wing. It, fits the description nicely again the height is not like nine feet but it has an imposing presence with the wings so that should make up for it this miniature right here is from reaper miniatures uh, this is uh, a human fighter eowyn as an eowyn the elf character played by Liv tyler in the lord of the rings movies same name obviously not the same character but i digress so i got this one because this can make an excellent example of the type of miniature you can get for rangers of shadow deep as you can see it, you know, I, I like the shield. I liked how it turned out. Um, successful highlights, you know, it's not like something that could win awards or anything, but it looks good on the table, and that's important. And this is an example of the type of miniature you can collect to play your uh, Ranger characters if you so desire to play Ranger Shadow Deep or anything involving Rangers. It's just a nice miniature. And, you know, it's just, you know, nothing extravagant. It's not like huge pauldrons or anything. It just looks like that, you know, I'm sure if you could look at this, you could probably collect this and paint it in winter colors or some, you know, and all that. It could still work. But I, I like this one. I figure, okay, I'll collect this one for an extra ranger you know, that I might play in the future if I decide to play this game. This is a Black Mane Knoll Ravenger. From, again, from Reaper Miniatures, from their bone lines. There's no metal, uh, as far as I know, for this particular miniature. It's uh, just one of their plastic range, but it's a nice one, and it turned out very, very nice as well. I got this one not only because it would look like a nice uh, miniature just in and of itself. In Rangers of Shadow Deep, there are gnolls, and one of these days I was thinking about collecting various sorts of gnolls um, on par with this and, you know, paint them up and serve as the gnolls you could play in the game. Um, have to count out how many gnolls you um, have through the monster list. Um, and I don't want to just pick any gnoll out there. Some of them are kind of proportional, weirdly. I want this this one, it fits sort of, il of the illustrations. They sort of have a hyena, almost bear-like. Even the description of the book describes it even rat-like. So you could choose like were-rats or something like that to conserve the bill. So if I decide to collect on this to play, um, I definitely like this. And there's a few from Ironwind Metals and... Um, you know, that could work as well. But Reaper, as I'm recording this, um, is going through a Kickstarter, and one of the um, miniature ranges to have are these um, um, gnolls that could also work as well. But even if, if I don't play it, I still think this is a very nice miniature, and it turned out nicely the way I painted it, so I'm happy about that. This next one here is from Citadel Miniatures. Yes, Games Workshop, way back in the day. This is a classic range. Many of you may not even aware about this. This is a Beastman of Slanesh, although... When you look upon it, you don't see any slash markings, but that's just it. Despite its name, it's also it also has another name of Sword Fifteen. Um, when you look at old Games Workshop catalogs, uh, you were able to order it through the mail by looking at the picture. You saw the part code you, and brief description could be like Beastman Sword Fifteen or Mace Number Two or things like that. There's a couple of part codes of, of this particular model throughout the years: um, zero two two zero Beastman or 3116 Beastmen, you know, later down the line. But, you know, that's for those who try to research this one. I, again, I just like the simplicity of it. It's a little shorter than your current Games Workshop fair, but for things like Hero Quest or what have you, um, this could work just fine because it was at that scale. Um, again, I just it's a, it's a nice one. Um, I just like how it turned out. I just, you know, nothing extravagant or anything, but I just, just like the model, simple as that. This is one of two vampire miniatures I got, and um, they're both from Reaper. The first one here is Anselmo Nosferatu Vampire from Reaper Miniatures. If you look in their search engine on the website, just type in Nosferatu, and this is one of two results that I had to get of both. I like this because these are nice-looking vampires, and one of the things I noticed, a lot of uh, vampires um, that you find in armies and such, they usually, usually identify them through gothic plate armor with batwing motif on their armor and weapons, and it's pretty common and almost kind of... Um, 
you know, and I sort of look at these days, kind of cliche. This was a typical vampire that looks like it can be running around at a dark alleys or in the sewers like that. For those of you into Vampire Masquerade, particularly the Dark Ages, this would have made an excellent uh, addition to if you're using miniatures, and this would be a great Nosferatu one. Um, like to look for more like this, and there's plenty out there, but you know, it's just a matter of searching for it. This is the other vampire miniature. This is Matthias the Twisted. Um, just to let you know, as I go through both, uh, it looks like I'm going through the same picture twice, but I did that just so um, one has the face more focused than the clothing, so the next picture has the clothing in that, and then I showed it back, of course. But this one, again, if you're playing, a, if you like the old Nosferatu-looking characters, and this would make a great um, addition for, like, if you were playing Vampire to Masquerade to Dark Age, no, Vampire to Dark, um, the Dark Ages, um, a spinoff of Vampire to Masquerade, this one made a great addition to that. But... Um, I like how this one turned out. I just painted with a, a gray, a green wash over it, um, and then highlighted with a, a gray again, and, hi and highlight with a flesh, a pale vampiric flesh from Reaper Miniatures. So, and the clothing, I wanted drab like that, similar to the picture you see on the website. And um, I think I like the way how they both turned out there. It's just, you know, I have plenty of werewolves, but I would like to see her counter out that with uh, cool looking vampires like this. Now, this miniature, I'm really glad I got this one. This is a Death Knight from Otherworld Miniatures. It's an English-based company. And it's pretty straightforward. It's a cool undead. And um, if you watch previous videos, I have a small um, undead warband of various kinds. And this one would be a perfect addition to that. And, you know, I painted this one more or less exactly how they painted it on the website that you find on this. But, you know... There are some who painted it different ones. So what I did is I painted a, a bolt metal um, gray, um, bolt metal silver. Yes, I still have the bolt metal silver from years back. It's still good, and I, you know, gave it a sort of a, a bronze trim on the armor. I gave it a red cape, and I um, put layer by layer of uh, brown and black ink. And you know, and mix them together and water it down so I could put it slowly, layer by layer, just so I could build it up to a, a grimy looking armor. Then um, later, I just um, put some uh, a green water dat down to a glaze and dabbed it here and there for some oxidation on the golden trim. And it turned out exactly as I wanted a nice, grimy looking um, undead. It's been around a while and you know, but not a pushover or anything. It turned out exactly what um, how I liked it, and um, well, and I think it's a great piece. In fact, check out Otherworld Miniatures, and you will find that these are wonderful um, miniatures, all metal, and they come in, um, and they're great for your basic D&D purposes. That's not exact. If you like a good classic look to your um, Dungeons & Dragons or Fantasy, this is a good um, miniature range to look into. I mean, there I've been tempted by many uh, miniatures. Now, here's the thing. Since this is based in England, it's kind of hard to get um, here in the United States, at least, you know, directly. You have to figure with shipping costs. The Night Gaunt I got from the uh, Rafam was, oh, man, I just got the single miniature and the shipping was terrible. But with, with this, I got for eBay. Some of the buyers of eBay grabbed some of these. And um, so if you keep an eye out, you may um, go to eBay, um, look up other world miniatures, see what you got, and you will be pretty surprised, you know, pretty amazed at what they've got. And and you just have to pay through there and be coming to you much quicker. So there's that. All right, so there you go. This is a picture of all of the fantasy ones I collected this time around. Um, I liked this little um, you know, collection here. There's some potential for any games I might play in the future there, but not that I have direct plans on it. But some, but mo as I said before, most of the time I just grab a miniature and say, ooh, I like that, collect it, you know, paint it, and just store it. But I... Solely over the years, I do like to collect a theme, and I think games like Rangers of Shadow Deep, Frostgrave, Stargrave, and those where you can choose any miniature you want and um, to serve your purposes, and that's a way to just um, find the ones that work for you. But others are just like, ooh, I like this, I miss that old classic look, I like this, and I just collect it and paint it, and you know, and now I present it through YouTube before I store it. So I'll make another video where it's just before and after the paint job for those who are interested. But there you go. That's my um, just wanted to explain uh, this batch and why I got it. So thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.